that um, we had found earlier. All right, so we found all those values that we needed to find, and the question is asking for us to find the current in each resistor, and so if we just look down this column, we've done that. Now, there are a bunch of different ways that you can check this. First things first, make sure that the voltages add up. Uh, for the 2 and 3, just remember that the voltages, you don't add those together because they're the same. So you have the 8 and the 4, and so that equals 12. Then, in the parallel as well, the currents add up, and the summation of those currents should be the same as the current going through the resistor that is in series with them. All right, and the last way we can check is by doing the power calculations. So we've got uh, 21.39 watts and that's just current times the voltage. We have 2.68 watts. We have 8 watts. And if you take those and multiply them, what you're going to end up with is 32 watts approximately. And so, like I've said in the pre like I said in the previous problem, you're not going to get the exact same number just because of rounding. So we're just going to keep on moving on to number 5. In number five, we're given this circuit with all of these different resistances in it, and we're told that the current at this point where the ammeter is, is one amp. And we're supposed to find the voltage of the battery. So first things first, what we're going to have to do is construct our VIRP chart. And I'm going to say that this is resistance one, two, three, and four. So we've got one, two, three, four, and total. And so we have four, 12, six, and two. And we know that the current through resistor two with the 12 ohms is one amp. From there, we can find the voltage by just multiplying the current and the resistance. So the voltage is 12 volts. Now, because this is a parallel circuit, we know that the voltage through this resistor is the same as through this resistor. So, we can put the 12 there, and 12 divided by 6 is 2, so the current through that is 2. The currents in a parallel circuit add up together. So since that's 1 and that's 2, the total current that is going through this entire part of the circuit is 3 amps. And that means that through here, through this resistor, and through this resistor, it's also 3 amps. Because if we were to simplify this, which we're going to do in a minute, uh, it would basically just be 3 resistors in series. And when resistors are in series, the currents are all the same. So that's going to have a current of three, that's going to have a current of three, so the entire circuit has a current of three. And Since we have current and we have the resistance of everything now, we can find the voltages, so that's 12 and that's six. And so since those are together and they basically just form one resistor that takes up 12 volts, the total voltage, if we add up, it's 12, 12, and 6. So what we're left with, or what we come up with, is 30 volts. And once again, although it just asked for the voltage of the battery, we're going to do the entire VIRP chart just so we can be thorough. All right, so we're going to find the total resistance right now. And so we have... 1 over 12 ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms because we're trying to get it so that everything is in series and we're condensing the parallel circuit. And so what we end up with is 1 over 4 ohms and since we're going to be taking the reciprocal of that we end up with 4 ohms. And so we have a 4 ohm resistor 
another 4 ohm resistor, and then a 2 ohm resistor. And if we add those together, what we're left with is an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms. From here, we're just going to find the power as a means of checking. So the total power is going to be 90 watts. So we've got 36, we have 12, 24, and 18. And when you add those together, you're going to basically just come up with the 90. So that's a quick one. Uh, like I said, we're going to be speeding up just because I'm not having to explain everything because it's all pretty much the same concept, just a little more complex each time. Okay, so now we're just going to move on to the next one. For problem number six, once again, we're asked to find the voltage of the battery. Now, we've got these four resistors, uh, three that are in parallel with each other, and then another one. And we're told that the current through this ammeter is 9 amps. So, this is pretty similar to the last problem. What we're going to do first is write out our VIRP chart. We've got one, two, three, four resistors and the total. We'll make this resistor one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we have resistor one, resistor two, resistor three, and resistor four. And we know that the current that is going through resistor one is 9 amps because the ammeter is right next to it. So we have 9. Now that doesn't necessarily hold true for this grouping of resistors. If we were to condense all of those into one resistor, yes, 9 amps would be the current passing through it. However, the current passing through it is different because it's in parallel. So what we're going to do is condense this first off. So we have down here on the bottom, these two resistors are in series with each other. So we add those together to get 6 ohms and then 3 ohms up here. So we have 1 over 3 ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms, which is equal to 1 half ohms. And when we do the reciprocal of that, we get 2 ohms. So the, uh, we could redraw that as having 17 ohms and 2 ohms. And really easily, since we have the ammeter here and we know the current passing through both of these, we can find the voltage of the battery, the total voltage. So we have a uh, equivalent resistance of 19 and we know the current through the entire thing is 9 amps. So if we just multiply those together what we get is 171 volts for the total voltage through the circuit. Now that's great but really we're going to do the rest of this just to make sure you guys all have it down. So next thing we need to do is basically in order to get the voltage and the current in all of the resistors that are in the parallel part of the circuit, we're going to have to find the voltage of the other resistor, of resistor number one that's outside of that. So we can subtract the voltage taken up by this resistor from the total voltage. So this is, we're going to be doing the first way uh, that we did in the last problem. I just think that way is easier personally. Uh, if you like the other way better, go for it. So you have 153 volts. So it's 171 volts minus 153 volts. And so what we're left with is 18 volts. And that 18 volts is going to go both to this resistor and through these two resistors. Now, don't be deceived by that. In resistor number two, yes, we do have 18 volts. But in resistors three and four, those don't have 18 volts apiece. The 18 volts covers both of these resistors, the total voltage taken up by both of these. So the voltage of 18, the 18 volts, 
that's what the voltage would be if they if there was only one res if the four and the two were combined into six ohms. So what we're going to end up having to do is say, okay, what would happen if there were the six ohms? We would find the current, and that's three amps. That means that three amps are flowing along this part of the circuit. And right here, it's in series. These two are in series with each other. And so the currents through them are the same. So we have three and three, because the, the currents are the same, even though the voltages are different. So we can just use Ohm's law, and so 18 divided by 3 is 6, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 2 is 6. Again, a way to check. If you add those two together, they, the voltages add up. And when you add um, basically number, uh, resistor number 2 with the combination of resistors 3 and 4, the currents add up to nine, which is the same as just the, the uh, which is the same as the current throughout the circuit. So that's consistent. And lastly, we're going to do the power. So, one thousand three hundred seventy-seven watts, one hundred and eight watts, thirty-six watts, and eighteen watts. And when you add all those together, you get what nine times one hundred seventy-one is which is 1,539 watts. So that was number six, and we're just going to keep on moving. In question number seven, we're given this circuit, and we're told to find the current through every single resistor. And so in our VIRP chart, the values that we can fill in, there are eight resistors in this. I've got the total. Okay, and we're told that the uh, total voltage is 48 volts. And I'm just going to number these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we have 16, 9, 7, 4, 12, 4, 8, and 8. So first things first, let's find the equivalent resistance. So we can add these together and these together. So we end up with the circuit goes and 16 ohms and it splits and so you've got uh, 9 plus 7 which is 16 ohms and then you have 4 plus 12 which is 16 ohms and then down here uh, nothing changes so it's just 4 ohms and then it splits and so it's the 8 ohm and then the 8 ohm and then they join back up and they go from here we're just going to condense that and condense that so I'll let you guys do that, but basically it's 16 ohms and then plus um, 8 ohms for the two resistors on the top part of the circuit. And then on the bottom part of the circuit, it's 4 ohms and another 4 ohms. And I just uh, skipped doing the one over and then all the resistances just because by this point, hopefully you guys can figure that out by yourself. And so we're left with 24 ohms and down here we have 8 ohms. And when you do the same thing, what you end up with is an equivalent resistance of 6 ohms. So I can put that right here. And since 48 divided by 6 is 8, the total current for this entire circuit is 8. What we're going to do from here is just look at this, and we see that the voltage would split equally. So there would be 48 volts along here, 
and 48 volts along here. 